I'm here with uh, Steph Zamorano and Ron Placone. And um, Steph, show them your nice T-shirt. T-shirt. Move your oh, microphone. Let me my tiny hand shirt. My tiny. Uh, where did I go? This way. There we go. Nice. That's the woman's. We have men's. Ron, you should have a men's on, and then we could I show. Know. Oh, I should maybe wear one, huh? Okay. I could go inside and get one. I don't. I'm not a T-shirt wearer. I don't uh, look good in T-shirts. But uh, I mean, some T-shirts I look. I look okay in. Anyway, here we go. Labor Party in Britain is uh, been taken over by Jeremy Corbyn. So they're a bunch of neoliberals in that party. Uh, but uh, Jeremy Corbyn is the real deal. He's the Bernie Sanders of um, of England, but more so. He makes Bernie Sanders look like a centrist, put it that way, right? So Jeremy Corbyn, so they have their... Uh, BBC News general election 2017 Labor's draft manifesto at a glance. So this is like the Labor Party's platform. And it got leaked. And uh, so here's what it is. They, they, they have actual specific policies to actually help people who need help. Not the ten, upper 1%. They actually have policies to help the people, not the uh, uh, plutocrats. Okay. So the uh, first of all, they have a, he has a they have a plan. The Labor Party they have a plan f called renationalization, meaning they want to renationalize the train service. Well, here it is. Uh, bring the railway railways back into public ownership as franchises expire and repeal the Railways Act of 1993, which privatized the network. So they used to have government run uh, railways, and then they privatized them. And everyone got worse service. Just like with the airline industry, you know, it used to be glamorous to fly on planes. And then they deregulated the airline industry, which is supposed to be better because then it's a free market. And then everybody's going to get better service because competition makes everything better. Except competition made everything worse in America. You get worse airline service. You get worse. The seats are smaller. You're more cramped. You're treated like cow. It's the worst experience. Flying went from being a chore to an ordeal in the United States. Now it's an ordeal. You get barked at the minute you get in the airport from government employees. You get felt up by freaking government employees. You have to get an x-ray from a government employee. Then you got to get on. You get barked at by, you get your no, your face broken in. If you don't, if you're a 69-year-old doctor and you don't want to get off a plane, you paid a ticket for. It's the worst. Flying is the worst and everyone knows it's the worst. And the flight attendants are always miserable because they're not paid well so i would be miserable too i'm not coming down on them uh although southwest they seem to be happier yeah they seem pretty chill there they seem pretty chill at southwest i don't know how they're, what they're doing over there so uh maybe it's the short flights make people happier so uh so here's some more they want to freeze passenger rail fares free wi-fi access across the network and end the driver only operation of trains and improve access so what they did was when they privatized the railroad they get rid of all the employees we just have one person you know how like when you go into a coffee shop and they have one person taking the money making the coffee getting you a bagel doing that one person so it takes forever and it's like you'd think they'd make more money if they had more than one employee but still they're so cheap they only have so this is the same thing so they get rid of all the employees they got one guy who just drives the train nobody gets service and they're like hey we're gonna get rid of that uh maybe we have a guy at the caboose <laughs> reverse the privatization of the mail royal mail at the earliest opportunity so they are privatizing the mail service just like they tried to do in the united states and the way they did it here they tried to bankrupt our p postal service by saying they had to pay their retirement they had to ha have it in a bank for 80 years out Remember that? They did mm -hmm. Henry Waxman a co op for that. That's a Democrat. That's why we gotta get rid of the Democrats. Uh so they're get, so this is you see what they're doing? They're bringing giving the country back to the people. Uh, our, I don't get it, Jimmy. What's their game? Here's What's my, their end plan there? Their end plan what with the mail? Y no, for uh doing legislation for the people. Yeah, it's weird, right? So here's another thing. They say create at least at least one publicly owned energy company in every region of the UK with public control of the transmission and distribution of grids. 
Makes sense. Here's one more. Repeal the Health and Social Care Act of 2012, which restructured the National Health Service in England and reversed privatization of the health services. So they, the neoliberals are trying to private. That's what they do. They take government stuff, they privatize it, make a profit, and everybody's service is worse. So they have a plan to get rid of it. What is what is the Labor Party's plan for late for education? Here's their plan for education. Um, they want to abolish university tuition fees. First thing, first thing, abolish, abolish university tuition fees. There it is. First thing, that's in their platform. Second thing, cradle to grave learning that is free at the point of use from early years to adult education. Cradle to grave education. You know why? Because education is not a cost. And that's the thing that neoliberals want you to think, that education is a cost. How are we going to afford education? That's like, anyway... It's an investment in your country. When you educate someone, that's you're not flushing the money down the toilet like if you built a bomb because that money doesn't rep, doesn't go into the economy, it just sits in a hole until it explodes. When you put money into someone's education, into their brain, then they go on to become productive members of society and pay lots of taxes. So they end up paying more taxes than you freaking gave them in education and they're adding to the economy and they're staying out of jail. They're staying off of public services. They're at that's an investment in your country. The GI Bill when we had all the servicemen go to college for when they came back from World War Two. That's what grew the middle class. So they got it right in their platform. We can't even, we can't get the Democrats to, to say it. Can't get the Democrats to do it. Re- reduce. Here's another thing. Specific. This isn't about leading with their values. They're, you don't see what you don't see on here. Lead with our values. That's not on there. Put hope on the ballot. Also not on there. I mean, I, I was going to point that. I mean, look at all these things. Just take the first word of yeah. all these. Reintroduce. Reduce. Free school meals. Bring. Put repeal. Yeah, there's no no vagueness here. They're very active. They're very straightforward. They're very. This is what's going to happen. Not like. Ugh. So now they want to reduce class sizes to under thirty for all five, six, and seven year olds. So five year olds go to school with, in classes bigger than thirty. <laughs> five year olds. Could you imagine having forty five year olds in a room trying to teach them something? Not How without a lot of drugs. I, you know what, Jimmy? I couldn't imagine just having to take a bus ride with 45-year-olds. <laughs> you know, Jimmy, I actually can imagine a class of 38 teenagers. Oh. Not just one class of 38 teenagers, multiple classes. So, like, right now I teach five periods a day, and I have about 172 kids. Wow. I'm responsible for these kids every hour. And it, it, it's a... I don't know how people do it. I don't know how, you know, you teach more than just one group of kids, you know, but the demands that they're putting on teachers every single year increase. So when I see something like this, wow, that would be a dream. That that would be a dream under 30. So right now you still teach at a blue ribbon school mm-hmm. and uh, some, apparently none of the parents give a shit that there's uh, 40 kids in classes <laughs> in one of the richest suburbs of Los Angeles, right? Vince Vaughn lives in that suburb, right? And uh, million-dollar houses across the street from the school. None of the teachers make enough money to live in that district. So they have to ship in their teachers, poor teachers, to teach their kids. And, and they don't give a shit that they have 40 kids in a classroom. Wouldn't you care a little bit? You're paying taxes. That's why you pay property taxes. Richest country in the world. We got 40 kids in the classroom. There you go. They, guess what? Labor Party's addressing it. Democrats don't even, they never even talk about it. Uh, free school meals for all primary school children paid for by removing the value added tax exemption on private school fees. So they uh, um, so they're going to put a tax on rich people to help build their country, which is what you're supposed to do. Why? Hey, why did you rob the bank? Because that's where the money is. Why did you put a tax on the rich people? Because that's where the money is. And they're not going to feel it. That's why you tax rich people. Because they also, rich people, are also making more off the the infrastructure that the government set up in the economy. That's how you make money. You have a business that relies on the infrastructure of your country. So now you have to pay back to build up that. You're also also benefiting from the education provided to the people in your country. So your government provides a lot of stuff, and it's time for a private industry to pay back when they make profits, and also rich people. So very nice. That's great. So, So that's the Labor Party. 
little different than the United States Democratic Party, right? Health and how about health and social care? They act, this is their platform. An extra six billion annually for the National Health Service, funded by increasing income tax for the highest five percent of earners, and increasing tax on private medical insurance. The top five percent of earners, yeah, let's tax them. Uh, an additional uh, eight billion over a lifetime uh, of the next parliament for social care. Look into creating a national care service for social care, quote, rooted in the traditions of our National Health Service. So they want to beef up national health care instead of uh, defund it, which is what the Republicans are doing. They cut trillion dollars, cut out of the health care budget in the United States. And here's a labor party. They want to build it up. So, OK, uh, Social Security and pensions. This is the labor party in England's platform. This is fantastic. Uh, uh, and an end to benefit sanctions, scrap the bedroom tax, reinstate housing benefit for people under 21. Uh, guaranteed the state pension triple lock throughout the next parliament so that pensions rise by at least the rate of inflation. Look at that. They're making sure their old people are taken care of in the one of a super rich country. And young people under 21s. I'm going to guess that means under 21. Mm -hmm. Is that what that means? Yeah. Uh, the winter fuel allowance and free bus passes guaranteed as universal benefits. So look what they're doing. They're uh, their government is making sure that their basic needs are met. You're going to have a pension. You're going to have a uh, fuel allowance. And you're going to have transportation. Wow. Wow. Uh, the commitment to protect the pensions of UK citizens living overseas in the EU or further afield. So they're going to protect the pensions even if you don't live in, in England anymore and you went somewhere else in the European Union. They're going to still protect your pensions. This is fantastic. This is a party that's like, hey, we're, going to, we're looking out for the regular people. That's what this is important. We're a super rich country. We could do this super easily. So uh, here's, here's something that the Democrats never talk about in America. So they propose... At least 100,000 council and housing association homes built a year by, by the end of, or by the end of the next parliament. So they have in their platform. So what's happening in the United States is no one's building low-income housing anymore in our cities, right? So that's why Los Angeles, you have a two-bedroom house <laughs> with one bathroom, and it costs literally $700,000 in a regular neighborhood. Not a rich neighborhood, not a wealthy neighborhood. It's a regular blue-collar neighborhood, $700,000 for a two-bedroom, 1,000-square-foot house with one bathroom. That's what we pay in Los Angeles. Same thing's happening in San Francisco. It's happening in Seattle. It's happening in New York. It's happening in uh, Atlanta. It's happening in Chicago. So people aren't there so they're not and nobody's addressing it by the way nobody's going hey we have to build low-income housing i guess because there's no super PAC for low-income housing people isn't the low uh low-income housing prisons <laughs> yeah that's what our <laughs> low-income housing is Thou and then the second thing they say thousands more thousands more low-cost homes reserved for first-time home buyers. So that's the thing about, there's no way to, for first-time home buyers in Los Angeles. So to get the to get a crappiest condo is going to be three dollars $400,000. It's going to be three or $400,000. You got to put 20% down. Who's got sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 who doesn't own a home yet sitting in their pocket? <laughs> you got 80000 in your pocket, Rod? No, sir. How about no. you, Arno? You got eighty grand? No. Weird. I don't have 80 grand in my pocket. So, uh so they're actually so they're actually going to help first-time home buyers. Barack Obama did the exact opposite when he left office. Barack Obama bailed out a private equity firm that is artificially jacking up rents of houses. And they're failing. Barack Obama bailed them out on this. So what does that do? That increases the barrier for first-time home buyers. That's what he did. The Labor Party and Jeremy Corbyn want to do the exact opposite. They want to make it, uh, they want to bring down the barriers for first time home buyers. In fact, they want thousands more low cost homes for first time home buyers. Have you heard a United States politician say anything like that ever? 
I've never, not even the mayor of L.A., not a city councilman. Not a, I've never heard anybody say we need more low-cost housing, even though everyone knows that's what we need. Isn't that funny? Uh, and an additional 4,000 4, homes reserved for people with a history of rough sleeping. Now, that rough sleeping in England refers to homeless people. So now we're going to move on to the economy. This is the Labor Party's platform. And just look at the contrast between a real populist party of the people's platform and the Democrats. We couldn't even get the Democrats. Anyway. No rise in income tax for those earning below $80,000 a year on personal national insurance contributions and on value added tax. Look at that. And that, get now this is important. So did you check? Yes, that's that's what it that's is. That's what rough sleeping to. is? Yeah, yeah, that's a reference to. A National homeless. Investment Bank. Look, now this is huge. They're proposing a National Investment Bank. Not a private bank. Not a Goldman Sachs. Not a Bank of America. But a bank run by the government. And what's the pur- purpose of it? It's to, it's, uh, to provide $250 billion of lending for infrastructure. Not a private bank. Now let's remember the private banks, what a bank is supposed to do is loan money out to businesses so they can go and start. They're supposed to invest. That's not what they're doing anymore. Banks are doing all the opaque derivative trading and all the credit default swaps. So it's all gambling. They've turned investment banking into casino hopping. That's what they've done. They say, let's have a national bank get rid of that. Dylan Radigan said that's what they should have did in 2009. That's what Barack Obama should have did. He didn't do it. Should have had a national bank set up regionally. Capitalized at $10 billion, 10 to 1. They can loan out $100 billion. My brother owns a small business in Chicago. And when the crowd be crashed, he needs loans to help finance projects. And he had no trouble getting them. Then the economy crashed. They wouldn't give him, he couldn't, nobody could get loans. That's why the economy was metal on metal for years. And by the way, when Barack Obama, 95% of all the economic gains in this recovery went to the upper 1%. 95% of the economic gains in our recovery went to the upper 1%. Nobody, and Barack Obama didn't go, that's messed up, we got to fix it. He's like, that's how how it's supposed to go. Get this, there's a part of their platform entitled Workers' Rights. They have a 20-point plan for security and equality at work, including an end to zero hours contracts and equal rights for employees. Right now, the Trump administration just took away your overtime protection. So now you can work overtime. They don't have to pay you. That's what they're doing. They're going the exact opposite way here. This is neoliberalism on steroids, what's happening in the United States. And the Labor Party, the same stuff, by the way, is happening in England. They're trying to fight back against it. Democrats don't even try. Well, they, they, they try. They, they, and on the Democratic platform, they say, hey, eventually we want people to make $15 an hour someday, mm-hmm. maybe. It's that. So we got that. So we got that. Someday. Uh, repeal the Trade Union Act and roll out a sectorial collective bargaining whereby industries can negotiate agreement as a whole. And the public sector pay gap. I don't know what that is. Public sector pay gap. Uh, guaranteed trade. Get this. Ready? Here it is right here. Guarantee trade unions a right to access the workplaces. Guarantee. So what they're doing in the United States, exactly, we're doing the exact opposite. We're doing the right to work, which is the right to not have a union. Which is a right to be exploited. Which is a right for more of the money you generate for your employer to go to your employer instead of going in your pocket. That's what right to work means, a right to work for less money. Uh, enforce all workers' rights to trade union represent- representation at work. Barack Obama wouldn't even mention when the when the teachers were getting their union taken away in Wisconsin. Not only would he not go there and put on a soft shoe and march on the picket line like he promised he would in the campaign, he wouldn't even mention it to the press. So they wouldn't even bring it up. Here it is in their platform, and they're going to guarantee trade unions a right to access workplaces and enforce all workers' rights to trade union representation at work. Wow. So, Jimmy, I was just going to add the public sector pay cap. That refers to uh, the more conservative party. I believe the Tory party put a thing that uh, 
that you can only pay the NHS workers and stuff like that so much, and they want to lift that because they feel that those people are being overworked and underpaid. Oh, it's a piece, so the national so it helps are... out the public okay. workers in that sector. Um, use public spending power to drive up standards, meaning awarding public contracts to companies which recognize trade unions. This is fantastic. Uh, shifting the burden of... Okay. So now you could see why neoliberals would be afraid of that agenda. They're pro-worker. They're pro-protecting pensions. They're pro-providing basic services for people in a rich country. Which they have every, ideas. They want free college. They have ideas. They want free college for people, free health care, free education from cradle to the grave. They want to protect your pensions. They want to protect your trade unions. So you can see why Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, they're not fans of Jeremy Corbyn or the Labor Party. You can see why, right? You can see why nobody ever talks about them in America. You can see why. Right? And the only time they do is to disparage uh, Jeremy Corbyn as he can't win an election, even though he just wiped out everybody else and, and overwhelmingly took over the Labor Party. I guess there's someone in the Labor Party more electable than him, but even though they can't win. The next live Jimmy Dore show in Burbank, California is May 22nd. May 22nd, that's a Monday night, live in Burbank, California. Special guests, a great time. Get your tickets right there.